So this is a very hard question. So for many of you, this is, is maybe one that you would skip uh, and come back to. Uh, there's a lot of information here, so hopefully you can kind of understand that you're probably going to need to make some sort of system of equations or equation, and that's complicated by the fact that we're not just talking about equal signs here, we're talking about inequalities, right? So you need to be, um, there's a maximum number of candles, right? So th you could be under it, um, and we want to stay within the budget. So there's a couple of clue words telling us that it's not just about the number itself, the 2200 or the 200 candles. It, it's, we, we have some leeway. And so we could design some equations that um, are going to capture this story. For me, it's not so bad because I've seen a lot of questions like this on SATs before. This is what I would call um, a quantity and value um, story. Basically, we're given two conditions. One represents the quantity of things that we can buy. The other represents the value of those things. Uh, so the quantity is just like how many candles are there, right? So we can create a two-variable inequality to represent the fact that we need a minimum of 200 candles. In fact, let's just let's highlight here, minimum of 200 candles. And there are two types of candles, right? There's the small and the large. So we can say one is going to be X and one is going to be Y. And so the very simple uh, inequality that we would make is that X plus Y has to be greater than or equal to 200, right? The minimum of 200 candles means we can go over, we can have more. But it has to always be composed of this combination of the small and the large. So this is just the first simple equation. The other one is more complicated. It represents the value of these candles. So in many cases, the value is represented by money in this case. But it doesn't always have to be. Sometimes it's like points scored or something like that. So it just it's, it's a, a loose term to represent that each of these things is worth something. So in this case, it's 490 uh, for a small candle and 1160 for the large candles. And we need to have a budget of 2200. So we're gonna use all of that to create another equation. So let's, just, this is, we gotta be careful here. So the small candles, I said were X, so we're gonna do 490X, right? The value gets multiplied. Each candle is gonna multiply by the 490 by another number, uh, plus 1160 times Y. And then we wanna stay uh, within the budget, right? So we wanna be under, less than or equal to 2,200, 2,200. So this is tricky, even coming up with these inequalities. And, and even if you did that, it's like, well, now what? What do I do? Like, you know, you could guess and check maybe and try some different things. Uh, it's tricky because, again, they're both inequalities. So there's lots of freedom in both uh, variables. But we have the calculator. And... <laughs> More than ever, the calculator is going to help us. I think the SAT probably intended us to do this. I'm not really sure. But if I graph these two um, uh, uh, inequalities, uh, and, I, and I just enter them right here, right? X plus Y is greater than or equal to 200, 4.9. Yep, these are exactly what I wrote. So good. Now you'll see everything is blue. Um, I need to zoom because these are some big numbers, right? 2,200 is a huge number. So I got to find where... Uh, this thing kind of really does its thing. Now, the good thing is if it's a story, we're always going to be in that first quadrant because, um, well, there's no negative number of candles. It can't happen. So we're going to be in the first quadrant. And remember, X is the small candles. Y is the large. So I'm going to zoom. I'm going to keep zooming, keep zooming. Let's see what we can get here. There it is. Now we're talking. So what we're looking for, the, the answer is gonna be somewhere within this like purplish area, this sliver to the right, right? You can see there's red on the top, there's blue on the bottom, and then kind of in the middle where they meet, there's this white space, which I don't care about, and then there's this like purplish overlap, and that is where my answers lie, okay? Now normally with inequalities, uh, we have multiple answers because we have uh, multiple possibilities, multiple combinations, in, in this case of these candles, that would satisfy the conditions, that would give us under budget and still have um, a minimum of 200 candles. So that's all good, except we obviously have one answer that we need, and that's because we want the maximum number of large candles. So, again, because of my experience with SATs, I know that when we're talking about maximums and minimums and we have inequalities, we're, we're talking about that spot right there where the two intersect, okay? That's where things happen, right? The maximums happen. So I'm going to write that point down. 17.91, uh, 182.09. Uh, okay. 
So obviously, neither of those things can be the answer because, um, well, we can't have a fraction of a candle. So we got to deal with that. Uh, I do really want to make sure, though, I'm um, interested in the right thing. And remember, they wanted the large candles. We said the large candles are Y. So it's really this 182 that I'm, I'm interested in here. Um, now, looking at the graph, I, I'm kind of just trying to think, OK, well, then should I go to 183 or should I go to 182, right? Should I round down, which makes sense with just the 0 0.09, or do I need to round up? And this is tricky because sometimes with stories, we don't round in the direction that we would normally round because the story kind of forces us in a certain direction. Um, here, the answer is actually going to be 182. So we're going to round down. And it has to do with the, the way that this purplish sliver is kind of built. So kind of try to picture it. It's hard. I can't draw on the graph, unfortunately. Um, but if you notice, the sliver is kind of pointed down, right? Look at both the lines that make up that purple sliver, right? The blue line is going down. The red line is going down. And so if we're talking about the Y coordinate, we want to we want to move down, right? We can't go higher. Is if we go to 183, um, we're going to have a problem where we're, we're now outside of this. So uh, the highest point is 182.09. 183 would put us outside of that shaded region. So um, hopefully you can just kind of see that. Um, I don't think I can really trace it the way I want. Yeah, it's not going to let me. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how it would work. Um, uh, we could, I guess, you know, maybe try 183 and kind of test that. I'm not going to waste your time with it here. I think I've already spent enough time on this question. But um, this is at least better than trying to think about this conceptually or dealing with algebra here because there's just so much to think about for a story like this. So the calculator is really great because it's going to let us just see all of it at once and understanding what the graph is telling us is really all we are then required to do. But obviously there's still the challenge of coming up with these inequalities in the first place. I do notice that they haven't put a lot of this type of question on the new SAT. It was very common on the old test. Um, but if you uh, see these kind of intense stories again, remember this quantity and value idea. You're almost always going to be making um, two equations, especially if there's two unknowns, two things, the small and the large candles in this case. We're going to have two inequalities, two equations. One is representing just the bare bones, like how many of a thing do we have? That's usually an x plus y equals a number situation. And then the value is a little more complicated. That takes into the account like a, a price or a rate or something. And that will also kind of be something times x plus something times y is equal to some number. So hopefully that format sticks with you so that when you get these complicated stories, you get a little bit of a memory that you can go on.